10, 8. Bruce, you went to way more de detail than I will. I, I like what you did the first, um, where is that? Here it is. The first uh, part of it, you know, where it just went, ah, you know, from these dates to these dates. Um, and then, um, and then the bluegrass thing, you we went into great detail on. You didn't, you could, you could have just said bluegrass lessons were, um, uh, you know, 149 to 184. <laughs> totally, I would have been fine with that. Uh, you are crazy. You are like, you are a machine over there. Practice on, write down everything I say. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's pretty crazy, but thank you for doing that. And I totally understand why you ran out of steam, man. You know, <laughs> and, and you'll be mad because <laughs> Only I got a request uh, on my, I was just trying to find the thing that you did and on Discord. And I don't think I ever downloaded it. So maybe I did now that I think about it. They got so many, I've got in our, in my live stream folder on my desktop, I have almost 400 different items. Um, everything from JPEGs to pings to P P PDFs. Uh, so anything that I have now, if I find it, it's going to be really old, but my, my hope was that, um, uh, I just had someone reach out and say, Hey, you know, can you do private lessons? Have you taught, you know, can you teach me how to understand pentatonics? And I wanted to direct them to the live stream lessons and, uh, they, um, uh, you know, that, that I want to just give them a list of, <laughs> so I'll post that, but it's going to be funny because it's like, yikes, you went all out. You went all out. Okay, so uh, we got we got a pretty good quorum here. We got 17 people. Um, David Sillers, good to see you. Uh, Joseph Finley, good to see you. John, good to see you. In Nashville, let's see. Bob Schumann, good to see you. Roger, Eduardo, awesome. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad you love the lessons. Um, and we're going to continue on this. Uh, so what I did here, I, I just did the D and G string. I, I did make one little clinical error that I'm real tempted to fix right now because it's not that hard. All right, so if I open the, the finale, um, and I, I'm assuming you guys saw the new video, not, not that it has, uh, that's a pretty involved thing. 
Was it Sam that you said? I think it was Sam that said he slowed it down. No, no, it was uh, Paul said he slowed it down, and he was like, you could see really how involved what was going on in there. It's it, you know, it's a byproduct of just playing for many years, and it's just a bunch of different influences. Everything from the Beatles to, like I said, Merle Travis to to um, uh, to John Mayer. Okay, so here's this. So the thing I messed up, if you look at bar 37, 38, 39, I've got a B. I, I, the B is supposed to be there, but I was I should have done like a chord name thing there, like it says B, and I should have put a finger there, a fingering there. So I'm going to put a, uh, it's going to be a fourth finger, and hopefully it won't do a stupid, it did. Ugh. Okay, hold on a second. And then I'm going to rebounce this. It just take a second. Um, all right. Now. And so what I'm introducing is within this lesson, even though I'm only dealing with two strings. So I didn't want to do a full review because I feel like four strings to have to read. I, I, wanted, I, I, want, this, I want this to be fairly easy to drop into any one of these lessons. Um, and, uh, let's see, save as PDF. Yeah. All right. Place. All right. Now, quit, save, oh, no. cancel, save, quit, save. All right. Now, um, So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to upload this to the Discord, and um, so I'm going to delete the one that's up there. I, and it's a subtle change. You're going to be like, you didn't need to do that. <laughs> I'm probably you're probably right. Uh, let's see, lessons PDFs. Boom. Okay, let's delete this. Delete message. Yes. Okay. No. Oh, what? Why did I close a window? I didn't. Okay. Um, and then I'm also going to drag this over to. So it's just another episode of CSI. You're watching me work on a computer. <laughs> and now for a commercial sponsor. Uh, let's see, yeah, airdrop. And now I'm going to drag this over here to this computer and you'll hear a little beep, I think. There we go. All right. Done. All right, now, <laughs> now that it's Okay. All right, let's drag this over here. Um, I know you guys are so excited by all of this. Um, but so I, so I kept it, like I said, I kept it fairly simple. Um, just two strings, but I took that opportunity to introduce the F sharp on the D string at the same time as the F. So we're not just learning three notes on the D string, we're going to learn four. And then I'm adding the B flat and the B natural on the G string. Normally we would only have two notes on the G string, right? Um, and so, okay, so now i got to get rid of, oops, get rid of the, nope. Oh, what did I just do? The heck? All right, sorry. Hopefully it just picks up where it left off. <laughs> 25 watching me play with a computer. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, I almost forgot about today. It was 11 o'clock last night when I did this. 
which is why I forgot to put the, um, I don't need that. Okay, so what I do need is to delete, delete this. So we're gonna get rid of, remove that one. And all I'm gonna do, all you, the only difference is you're gonna see uh, the, the letter B and the number four there. <laughs> All that could have been spared if I just said, hey, would you write the letter B in the number four there? But anyway, uh, I, I feel like when we get there, we'll be glad it's there. Okay? So, um, normally when you learn the D string, you would learn like um, D, E, F. Okay? So the D is open. And you can see on there that the bottom line is uh, below the space. So we're, we're now to the outer reaches of the staff, okay? Any notes we learn beyond this pretty much are going to have what's called ledger lines. And they're just going to be little lines that go through the note, or above or below the note, actually above the note, um, or through the note. And all that is is a mini extension of the a note width extension of the staff, okay, when you see ledger lines. We'll get to those next week. In fact, uh, uh, no, actually, next week we're going to do a review of all this, all four strings, okay, and maybe some chords. So it may be a two-pager again. Um, hopefully you're putting this all together. How many pages do we have so far with the two-pager last week and then one page? Is, um, no, not 15. No, I was talking about measure 20, 39. Um, So, um, hey, Aslan, good to see you. Hey, Jack Lloyd. So um, we have the D, which is below the staff, E, which is the bottom line of the staff, and F is the bottom space of the staff. Now, remember, I, I don't know if you ever learned music in school at all, but you probably, every good boy does fine or every good boy deserves fudge, and those are the names of the lines from bottom to top. And So this is the E that's the every in that uh, mnemonic, I guess that's called. Um, and then uh, the F, the spaces are F-A-C-E, spell the word face. And, um, and there you can see in bar three with the third finger on the, or third fret, and third finger in this case, but that's an F. So we have D, open, E, F, and then E again there. And then back to D, E, and then bar four, I'm sorry, not bar four, bar six, right? Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, bar seven is uh, an F sharp. We're going to use our pinky to get that F sharp. So if that's F, this is F sharp. You can see the F sharp there. Um, I do have down in bar uh, eight, 19 and 20, I have an F, then an F sharp and an F sharp, and then an F natural. So I, you, I, I wanted you to kind of see the natural sign. I wanted you to get, uh, remember that the, the sharp last, any accidentals last to the end of the bar, um, unless they get negated, which is exactly what happens in bar 20. Okay. Hey, Pepper's here. Okay, and so if this is too easy for you, you can always go up further up the neck and read. Um, when we learn the bottom string, you won't be able to do that. But um, yeah, so if this is too easy, you can, you can go up to the fifth fret and play here, or you can go to the tenth fret here and play there. Um, also, the other thing is I suggest if, if this is too easy for you, when we're reading, practice looking ahead and memorizing, do, you know, short-term memorization of a bar, two bars, three bars, whatever. And that's really ultimately how you get through difficult and fast passages when you're sight reading. Um, sight reading is not going to be a real big thing. But learning how to read music is good for learning lots of different things. So, okay. So again, D, the open D string, the fourth string, counting from the bottom, one, two, three, three, four, is written, notated that way, below the staff. The bottom line is E, second fret is E there. And then F is the third is the is the third finger, and that is uh, the bottom space. And then we go back to E. Let's go ahead and read. Let's read that. Okay, one, two, three whole notes. Two, three, four. Two, three, four F. Two, 
two, three, four, back to E. And then just let's hit an open D together. Four, boom, okay? If you're in tune, I'm in tune. Um, okay, next one, next line, bar five, we have open D, we have E again, and this time we have the F sharp, okay? And you can hear that's the beginning of a D major scale, right? So we're not messing around with the top two strings this week, so uh, we're not going to be able to do a full octave of a D major scale. But um, in fact, we don't have C sharp yet either, so we couldn't. But uh, oh, nice, nice, Catherine. <laughs> you need some guitar tree, really. I don't know what that means, but guitar. Guitar teach, guitar teacher, really. Um, okay, so let's play that again. To open D, E, second fret, pinky out here, reach out there and get that F sharp, and then back to E, and then D. Okay, let's read that. Two, bar five, four. D, two, three, four, E. Two, three, reach to F sharp. Two, good. Three, four, back to E. Two, three, four. Now remember G. Is open the open G string is notated if you look in bar 10 it's the second note there that on that second line from the bottom every good boy does fine it's the good okay and then the only other note we have right now in this next phrase we're gonna learn three notes now on G though remember we only had G and A A is the the uh, second space from the bottom the A in face oh string <laughs> guitar stress relief oh, yeah that's a good idea <laughs> yeah um, so second finger on the second fret, and then, uh, that's it. That's all we need. So, and we're going to have an F natural here again. Notice that we're, there's no sharps, there's no accidentals there. Okay. So let's play all of, uh, nine through 12. Here we go. One, two, D, four, two, E, four, F, open G, A. G, F, E, and then D. All right. Okay, let's do that again. Two, three, four. Oh, sorry. Two, three, half notes. Two, four. Two, look ahead, four, two. I think it's probably also good for staving off Alzheimer's. I'll try to keep my fretting hand right in the, in the camera there. So my left hand isn't really that much bigger than my right. It is, it does spread more and it is longer though. I've shown you that, right? It's from playing all these years. Okay, uh, let's do that one more time. Uh, in fact, let's loop it a couple times. Three, four, D. Two E, F, G, A, G, F, E, back to nine, four, two, four, two, four, two. And let's end on D. Okay, you can even play a D minor chord. That's, that's the first um, five notes of a D minor scale. Okay. You could even use that as a, um, a little um, snippet for soloing over D minor if you wanted to. It works great. All right. Um, let's see. The... Uh, Um, so the next one, we're going to add the B flat. Okay. So this is one of the notes that's really been, that's really hard to read when you're playing guitar for some reason. It's for me, it was a mental block, but I, it was a, a mental block for pretty much all of my students. So I realized when that, when I was teaching how to read, uh, years and years ago when I was teaching full time, uh, that, um, I wasn't the only one that had this problem. 
but visualizing a flatted open string is difficult, especially because it's one thing to go E, oh yeah, you know, like right there. You're thinking B flat's here, but it's not. That's B. So and we're going to get that today. We're going to do this B. So the, we're going to use our pinky twice today. But the third fret of um, the G string is B flat. Now, when you tune, you know, kind of the way we first learned to tune, you realize you move down to do the B string, right? So that note is B right there, fourth fret. So the flat B, we have to go here. Okay, so we, when we flat something, we lower it. Okay, we're making the string longer. If we wanted to sharp something like F, we're raising it, we're making the string shorter, okay? All right, so, um, so look at G, here's the G, and then A is here, B flat is here, and then we're gonna go back to A and G, okay? So we're gonna do the D, E, F, G, A, B flat. Now we're really, we're doing the first six notes of the D minor scale. Hey, Scott Jacobs, good to see you. I'm trying to catch everybody that's jumping in here. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Uh, bar 13. To the end of... Oh, yeah, I didn't do the bar lines right. Again, I was doing this late at night, but uh, don't worry about it. So uh, to the end of the line, just to the... Uh, we can we'll, we can repeat it, uh, and I'll go slower this time. Sorry about that, but I think I went too fast on the line before. So bar 13 to bar 16 and back again, okay? Here we go. Starting on the open D, below the staff. Three, four, D, two, E, four, F, two, G, A, two, B flat with the third finger, back down to A, to G, open, and then back to open D, the top, I mean bar 13, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, again 4, E, D, 2, bar 14, F, open G, E flat, A, and then G. Okay, and then we can end on D. A lot of, lot of D-centric melodies here. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to, uh, we're going to get busy here in a second, but let's just do bar 17 through bar 20. Okay. Um, and then probably what we're going to do is 21 through 28. The only thing I really want you to get out of 17 is that we're going to have in, in bar 19, we have an F, which is the third fret, and an F sharp, and then an F sharp and an F. And I just want you to, it's mainly for the notation lesson there. I probably should have done a tie, tying those two F sharps together. Um, and if you had a tie, actually, um, you probably would have an F sharp in, written in bar 20, but most likely it would be, it would be in parentheses. Uh, the reason is, if you saw that there was an F sharp there, if, it, if those two notes were tied, you, you might forget the tie and hit strike it again. But when you have those parentheses, it reminds you, as well as the tie, that you don't strike that note, you let it ring. Um, so, oh, thank you, Bruce, I'll pin, I'll pin that. Sorry about that, I totally forgot. I'm gonna, Bruce, Bruce put the Discord link up and um, the join link, it's totally free to join, and that's where you can download all the PDFs and all the JPEGs and all the pings from all the lessons. <laughs> I think, like I said, in that folder, it's almost 400 different things that I've uploaded, I think, to various uh, uh, videos and websites or Discord stuff. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to close the Discord though. It's gonna blip at me. Okay. So let's do this, uh, bar 17, we just have two Ds, two Es, and then F, F sharp, F sharp, F, okay? Uh, melodically, it doesn't really, I mean, actually, that's a cool little melodic idea. Um, I love that little melodic idea, but we're not really, we're not really doing anything melodic here. Okay, oh, I'm slouching. All right, ready? Here we go. 
One, two, bar 17, three, four, D. Two, again D. Four, E. Oops, second finger, two. Four, third finger, two, F sharp, pinky. Four, F sharp, to F natural. And then go back to the beginning. Four, to D. 17. E, twice. Two, four. Gary, two, four, two, four. Open D, two. Again, we're just trying, I just want you to be able to see what it looks like to have an F and an F sharp in the same measure. F sharp and F in both directions. All right, so um, let's do, we're going to go real slow. I'm going to try to go real slow. Okay, and also, you know, I've always said this, and you can do, pr you can print up two copies of this, one for you to write everything I've written like above at the very top. Usually I write that up there with any new notes um, the first time. Um, but after that, um, you're on your, I want you to kind of memorize things. But you're totally fine if you want to print up, um, if you want to print up one of those, to give yourself a quiz, okay? Uh, you can totally do that. The garden is here. I should move the lessons from Wednesday. Of course, as soon as I move them, if I move them from Wednesday to like Friday, then uh, then the gardener will show up on Friday. <laughs> but the pool guy was here too. Usually he knocks on my door because he wants to talk to me. I don't know why I chose Wednesday when I whittled down to one. Why did I choose Wednesday, Bruce? I mean, I could do two. Is there a, a day that's best for all of you? I don't know. That, that could be a good quiz, uh, a good uh, a poll on the on Discord. If somebody wants to do a poll on Discord, we could do that. Uh, but some of you would probably say, yeah, better times, too. <laughs> Tom, get up at 2 in the morning and do the lesson. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and if you use the Discord, try to use your YouTube name if at all possible. You can have multiple handles on Discord, so it shouldn't be a problem. But that way we know who the heck you are. <laughs> so if you're ranting over here and we want to cancel you here and you start ranting over at Discord with a different name, we want, we, then we don't do that because then we can't cancel you there too. So uh, that's basically the reason, isn't it, Bruce? <laughs> well, that and so we know who we're talking to. And, you know, you can be anybody you want to be. That's why I love Starbucks. You can tell them whoever you want to be. I remember one time I told him I was Kobe. My name was Kobe. <laughs> and so when they call that Kobe, I forgot that I did that. And I was looking around, Kobe Bryant's here? And I realized it was me. <laughs> so, oh, John, thank you. I appreciate that. You're, you're a good egg. Okay, so. Um, John's keeping the dream alive. Okay, so this bar 21 to through... 28 uh, is going to be tough. Um, I'm going to loop it. I'm going to try to, uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to try to um, use the metronome here. Where is that thing? Where's my metronome? There you are. And I'm going to, I'm at 70. That's way too fast. I, I'm, I'm going to treat these like half notes, okay? We're going to go stinking slow. Short story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was a short one. <laughs> okay. So, in fact, in fact, let's just read through it together. No, out of time, just go one, you know, I'll just tell you what I'm doing and you do it with me, okay? So, we're going to go for four, eight bars here, okay? So, we're starting on the F, okay? So, we're not even starting on a D note. We're starting on the F, the third fret of the fourth string, F, and then we'll go down to E, second fret, and D, then open G, F, and then down to E, and then D again, and then A on the G string, and then here's our B flat, T, 
to A. So there's our B flat, third fret on the on the G string. So then you got the B flat there. And and that accidental carries to the end of the bar, but just to the end of that bar. There's A is next, then F on the third fret of the D string, and then E, second fret, open D, and then E, I'm sorry, F, then E, then G, okay, down to F again, then A at the second fret, then our B flat again, up to open G, then F on the third fret of the fourth string twice, then open G, and then E, and then three Ds, four, and then three E's, second fret. I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> Again, I did this at 11 o'clock last night. I was like, oh, shoot, tomorrow's Wednesday. <laughs> Beth got home on, what was it, Monday night. So my, my calendar is all off, you know. Oh, and LAX, what a worthless airport that is. Oh, my gosh. I got to the airport, and it took me an hour and a half to get Beth out of the airport. An hour and a half. Got there at 11, because that's when her flight came in. I did, we didn't leave the airport until 1230. It's ridiculous. And they're working on it. I hope they're making it better. But I think they're doing things that most people won't use, like they're putting trains into it. I don't know that people are going to take the train to the airport, but maybe they will. But, um, okay. Okay, so again with this, sorry about the lawnmowers. Um, again, let's do this, I'll go again really slow. Um, because the reading thing is is difficult, and like I said, you can print up two copies. One you can write on and write the letter names and, and the finger fingerings if you want. I mean, and but then I ultimately prefer you to not read that one. I prefer you just to read the one with just the notes on it, because that way you're more likely to learn the notes. Sorry, I hope I'm not missing anything. Gary, that restaurant though that I found near your your lake <laughs> looks good. I I was thinking about that place the other day. I was like, man, that pickles and the, the coleslaw. I'm a sucker for good coleslaw. Um, can get can we get more likes for Tom? <laughs> Thank you, Ollie. This I'm only here for my self esteem. That's the only reason I'm here. So is there? I, I, oh, Saturday at eleven oh six. Okay. <laughs> Saturday's tough because it's like that's the day I, I know I've got to go to church and so I got to do prep and I got you know, I don't know not bad. How important is to finger first position as opposed to second? Um, well, that's true. You can totally do second position. Like for example, um, everything we did because because we're not playing the first fret on either one of these strings. Um, so you can think of those numbers as referencing the frets more than the fingers. So do you understand, everybody understand what Sam's asking? So instead of playing, you know, if you if your, your pinky's not very strong, um, um, or, uh, but yes, it's true. If you're, if you're not gonna play, like if I were playing in the key of D, I'd be real tempted to to play in second position because I have a C sharp, so I don't have any notes on the first fret. So there's no reason to have to assign a finger to a fret you're not going to use, especially um, a, a dominant finger like the index finger. So if you can move over, that's great. So yeah, so totally. Um, was I referencing fingers? Maybe I was referencing fingers. I mean, I know I was. Hey, Tony, good to see you. Oh, you're having trouble with. Uh, uh, I'll tell you who's the boss on that is uh, who's really good with that is Dennis, our moderator Dennis. Um, uh, so De Dennis might be able to help you with that, but yeah, it's it's a little weird the first time. Um, let me let me let me create a Discord link just in case there's something weird. Let's see. 
There's a Discord link in the description of this video. Um, so let me let me post it and see if it's any better from my. Okay. Sorry, Bruce. I'm gonna I'm gonna replace your pin. Okay. So let's do this bar 21 again, slowly. Um, and I'm gonna finger it with my. I'm gonna go to second position. If you want to do that, you can totally do that. Although I do like bringing the pinky into things. Although in this particular passage, we're only using the first and second finger. We're only at the open, uh, open second and third fret. In fact, if you want to play that right now, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, A, G. Sometimes that helps, okay? Sometimes it helps to play the scale or the, all the notes you're going to use. Just kind of so you know, okay, no, so none of those notes now will surprise you because you just had your hand on it. Does that make sense? Okay, so again, bar 21, we're starting on the, on the F note. Here we go. Oh, that's awesome, Catherine. That's smart. Yeah, I've got a second screen too, so. That, that makes huge sense. Uh, so then if everyone did that, then I could go to this, right? <laughs> I think Catherine, Catherine's watching on a TV, like a big TV. So like right now my head is like, like what, you had an 85 inch TV or something? <laughs> I only do that for Catherine, just to mess with her. So I'm like her little brother. <laughs> I'm everyone's little brother. Okay. Okay. So if you do those notes, you got every note that we're going to need for this eight bar phrase here. Ready? So we have F to E, D, G, F, E, D, A, B flat, A. F, E, D, F, E, G, F, A, B flat, G, F, F, G, E, <laughs> D, 2. <laughs> uh, 82 inch is nice we just got it what did we just get we just got it see we had a 47 i think we just got a 65 and it seems massive <laughs> i actually couldn't get any bigger on that wall i don't think that where we watch tv but yay yay tony got it to work awesome thank you Okay, all right. So um, again, this is just you. This this is for you to practice all week long. Going back, you've got you. You're, we're making a book here. Okay, we're making a reading how to read music book, and it's going to get in. You know, it could potentially get involved. Um, we'll we'll start doing. You know, I'll start writing some of that out in music note. You'll be you'll amaze yourself. And like I said, music notation in some ways makes more sense than, well, definitely makes more sense than tab. Tab is easier on guitar, uh, but music notation makes more sense when it comes to uh, theory and things like that. So, all right. So the next phrase, what I did was, we're just going to do the next four bars here. It's 29 through 32. And I just did a D minor triad. Almost like a vocal warm-up. La, 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 la. Now you'll notice again bar 31 we've got an F sharp that there's two F sharps in that but you'll notice I didn't put a sharp sign in front of the second F sharp that's not an F natural that sharp is good to the end of the bar but only to the end of the bar if there was another F in the next bar and there was no sharp in front of it it would be F natural okay uh, this is another, uh, yeah, if you want to use, uh, like um, Sam Sam said, if you want to use your, play in second position and use your first and third, and, first, second, and third fingers for this, you totally can do that, okay? 
So again, let's look at this. Uh, bar 29, D, open D, then F, then A, then F again, and then D, A, and then D. Okay, so what we're playing is one, three, five, three, one, five, one. Okay, that's um, the, a, a common vocal. That's a very fairly common. And you go. Right, that's kind of a very common vocal warm up, but uh, this is a variation on it. Now, um, the next one is we're going to go D and then F sharp, one, three of the D major chord, and then A, back to F sharp, D, A, D, all right? And you can let those notes ring out against each other. There's no real crime in that, necessarily. I mean, unless, you know, so it's also the fifth interval. That's, hey, Mamba's here, and Sham's here, too. Cornflake codfish fry. Mm. Yeah, it's getting to be summer there, man. It's a joyous time, summer in, in Wisconsin. It's warm-ish. <laughs> the, the coldest winter I ever spent was summer in, Indi in Michigan, so <laughs> I like Michigan. All right, to paraphrase uh, uh, Mark Twain. Okay, open D. Let's go to bar 29 again. D, F, A, F, D, A, D. You can, you know, and you, when we play that, you can see that triad. Like music makes more sense. Notation, music notation makes more sense in tab, particularly when it comes to seeing triads and scales and things like that. Okay, because you can kind of see the, the every other note aspect of a triad. Right when you do when you build triads, it's a one three five. You're skipping the two and the four, so you can really see in um, in music notation the every every other letter aspect of, of of chord theory. Okay, the next one is D, F sharp, and again, if you want to play in first second position, you can use these two fingers, and then D A D. Okay, let's try this again. Three four. D, F, A, I'm going to loop this. I think the lawnmowers are somewhere between, or the blowers are somewhere between F and F sharp. <laughs> so it's right in basically going between D minor and D major, two different chords. So we're working that F and that F sharp in, in that phrase. Okay, the next phrase, it, I'm just randomizing thing, but I did bring in the, the tie because I don't want you to forget some of the notation um, tools uh, that we've used in the past. Um, so I did bring in the tie so that that G with that arch going to the other G in bar 34 and 35 means that you hold that G out for four beats. So it's kind of like it's a half note, or a whole note, sorry. Um, and I guess the, the other way, you could make it a whole note if you made that bar 6-4 and the next bar 2-4. <laughs> See, this prevents that from happening. So you don't have like a bar of six and a bar of two. You can literally just carry things over, all right? So here, so, so this one, we're starting on the G string, open G and then twice, and then A, B flat, A, and then F, D, G, sorry. One, two, again, A, twice. B flat, A, G. <laughs> guys, you guys are totally having conversations. Oh, 87 in Wisconsin, that is really hot for Wisconsin. We've been cold, but we're getting 90-degree weather this week, so we're going to hit the 90s. 
but our house is pretty cool. I, I, I will have the air on, but not very, it won't be on much. Um, I'm watering my lard, yard trying to get it green, but it doesn't seem to be working. Okay, let's try 33 again. One, two, three, open G. G, A, B flat, A, F, G. Where's Paul Meyer? Two, okay. Four again. G, G, A, B flat, A, B. Four. One, two, A, B. Long, that's actually not a bad thing to do. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna go again. Two, three, four. We've moved fast. Now here we are going to get that new note, um, and it's going to be the fourth fret on the G string, and that's B, just like just like our tuning note. So if you saw that note, you've got options. All right. If you saw that note um, and uh, you um, were playing, you could you could either play it here, or you could play it with the open B. Sometimes it's easier to play it here than up open B. It just depends, you know. Um, if you had a phrase like that. Without having to cross strings and play one note on one string, it's easier to play it that way. Then. I like playing. I like fretting the B in that kind of uh, context. So, oh, Paul's here. <laughs> you're, oh, good. You're practicing. Okay, good, good. Um, and if you guys are, some of you are on 82 inch, I think I, this, my screen for the, my iMac is 27. Man, 82 would be massive. Oh man. So this is, on an 82 inch screen, this is really annoying. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good thing I'm wearing pants. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, yeah, right. You guys are like totally trying to get me off task. Well, we'll stop. We'll be done here in a second so we can shoot the breeze. I can shoot the breeze. I have to work here, people. <laughs> Someone's putting in a day's work. Okay. You guys are just goofing off. If you were a class, oh my gosh, you'd all be serving detention. You'd all be doing detention just like when you were young. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so let's just do this next line. Okay, we got four Gs, four As, four Bs, and four B flats. All right? And uh, the reason I notated the B there is because that's the first time it shows up. That's why I wrote B in the four. That's that's the change I made in the disc on the on the PDF. That was all I that's what took up the first 10 minutes of my live stream. <laughs> yeah, so good thing you're 10 feet away. <laughs> yeah, I would hurt my neck if I had to look up at a screen. I, that's why I have my screen below me instead of above me. So, All right. Um, okay, 37, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four. G. A. B. B flat. Such a European. <laughs> we have to wear pants? A, B. Okay, now look at the notes as you're playing them. Just, just to kind of drill them into your brain a little bit more. Yeah, I'm getting bored. 
<laughs> All right, last line, bar 41. Let's go to A. A, A, G, G, F sharp with the fourth fret. E to D, two, and then F natural, two, A, and then D. It's kind of a weird melodic phrase. I don't know. Oops. What did I do? Oh, no. No. Um, I do like the the juxtaposition of the major minor kind of thing. Um, I know that, let's see, was it uh, Arvo Part, one of my favorite composers, um, did his Los Angeles Symphony kind of superimposes the key of A major over the key of A minor. And it just, it sounds really, really cool. Um, you know, some of the orchestras playing A major and some orchestras playing A minor. No, so I think that's the Gardner. Hold on a second. Everybody practice your reading. I'm back. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, look, I got 50 more viewers. <laughs> Gee, actually, viewers did go up. You guys are hilarious. I need to just leave. I'll just turn this on and leave. <laughs> so, uh, 
It, yes, you're right. I forgot about the intermission music. Um, I did do create this today or yesterday for a TV show. It's going to be loud. <laughs> Let's see, what do I got here? Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. All right, so. Dang it, sorry. There we go. Too many windows. Too many, too many programs open. Okay. Um, oh, what's what's going on with mom? Is it Mambo? Wait, who? No, it, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, retinal detachment. Dang. That would be bad for me. Did did you... A friend of mine had that and got hit in the face with a basketball. But I only have one eye. So my eye doctor is very protective of my one eye. And I don't do things... I try not to do things where I can damage my eye. I actually got a piece of metal stuck in my eye, in my good eye. So it rendered me blind. Uh, I had to go to the doctor and they had to pull it out. <laughs> and it was it was just a little metal flake, but the tiniest thing, just like the Bible verse, right? It says uh, about, you know, you're pointing out the speck in someone's eye when you have a log in your own. Um, but the, uh, the uh, you know, I couldn't see because my eye was just constantly tearing up trying to trying to get rid of it and I had to go to the doctor and they had to they had to I you know you can't I don't know they had to hold me down <laughs> they literally had to hold me down to pull that thing out of my eyes so uh and I was just all I was doing I had my glasses on and everything all I was doing was I was working under the building and I was looking up and I happened to hit a rusty pipe with a wrench and some rust fell in my eye and it just, one of the flakes just happened to wedge into my eye. It's bad. Is that, uh, yeah, it was B, uh, G minor. I'm sorry, F minor. It was so distorted there, though. Anyway, it's, it's a, listen to it now, it's a little boring, but it's actually, un, it's underscore music, it's un, bed music so all right all right so we done everything well let's do bar 41 again uh, again we can use our first finger that was a great call by Sam um, uh, that you can move at, for this particular lesson. If you want to write on the top, you know, play in second position, you can totally do that. Um, really what I, uh, because when the rubber meets the road in the real world, if this were a chart that were handed to you, I would probably do that. I might not at first. I might go, oh man, I'm so tired. Oh wait, I can play all this without ever having to, you know, go to the first fret. So, um, so I'm fine with you fingering it that way because the real world, you would do something like that. And this is ultimately I want, you know, you to have as much real world playing opportunities as possible because that's when you get better. When you're in playing with other people. Yeah, 
Exactly. Oh, thanks. Somebody approved it already. Um, what is the, oh, the word fingering, really? <laughs> Come on. YouTube is so sensitive. Um, so, so we can play this uh, with our first, you know, first finger at the second fret. That's called second position. Okay. So here we go. Bottom forty-one. A two times. A A G G F sharp F sharp E E D two F four A two D. Oh, Lena, God bless you. Thank you. Okay, now um, let's go back. Since we got we got plenty of time here. Woo, look at those cool. Okay. Let's go back top top of this for praise. Remember, uh, top three strings open. Okay. And then we add the first fret C. So we're only changing the B string to D. I love this chord. To C. And then back to G. All right, the next line down, we'd start out again with the G, E, and E all open. And we do have to move to first position for all this, but then we have F on top, F sharp on top, G on top. So you can see that the bottom notes don't change, but the top note is changing. Just the top note. Again, 49, two, four. Oh yeah, this is the second page of last week's lesson. That's fine. So we did chords. That's pretty. That's pretty advanced stuff right there. But I tried to. I tried to do it so that you can. I'm only changing one thing or, you know, I'm keeping it pretty simple. Or later in this page, on that page, I get to the point where I'm doing, um, uh, I'm going to go back to this though. So if you guys want to keep practicing this, you can. Um, but uh, you get to the point where you, you are the, the, I get to the point in that lesson where I'm doing very common chord progressions, you know, one, six, four, five. Uh, six, four, five, one, that or one, yeah, you know, all those different variations that make up like much of pop music and music that we grew up listening to. Um, oh, so no, no, Sham, you're not wrong. I, I, one of the things I could do is I could get a, a, one of those microphones and then set up a stand and have, you know, but I just hate having it in my face. Even if it's over here, I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe I should do that. Um, uh, but then, I, you know, I'm playing a guitar, so I'm not going to mic the guitar. Then I got two mics I got to deal with as well as the computer keyboard. I know that the sound is not optimal. Um, if I were deciding to do YouTube full time, then I would totally do that. Uh, this for me is mainly just helping you guys learn and keeping it as simple for me as possible. Um, uh, but yeah, the SM, I, I, you know, I've been thinking about getting an SM7, which is the microphone, but I really, it's good for rock vocals, uh, but I really don't do any vocals here. So any, you know, hardly anymore. Um, my friend Kelly, she's moving to Texas, so I'll see her even less than I see her now, although she'll be here for different things. Um, and um, let's see. Oh, I didn't send this. Wait. Um, so what else is going on? All right. Um, how many sheets in today's PDF? Just one. Just one. No, there's no second page. That was um, that was last week's. Last week's was the only two pager we've had, and so that was the. This is the second page from last week's. So I I didn't create a 
a, a view of the set the I don't know. It's just trying to get the right size for everything is, is not, it's like, uh. The other thing I could do, what if I do something like uh, duplicate? This would be more work. It would slow me down a little bit. So what if I got rid of this? Let's see. Where are you? Yes. And then, so this would have to go, which is completely unnecessary. But I could do multiple screenshots of this duplicate. I don't know how I would place it though. What, like, so for example, say I did, I don't know, four, four bars of this. So that way I could be a little bit bigger for the, for you to see my hands, but see then where do I put this? <laughs> on my face. See, that's no bigger than it was. I guess, I, you know, so I don't know. I think the, I think the, what I've been doing is fine. Um, yeah, easy is definitely better for me. Uh, Yeah, and the thing is, I can't hear the sound. So um, I could, yeah, see, I, I wouldn't want to wear, and then I got to wire a headset and get cables caught up and things. Um, it would be great to have, you know, and I, it's not difficult to get the interface. I think it's free even, the, the audio interface. I can even, I think, in my settings, choose the audio input. Let's see, audio... General, yeah. Devices, disabled, dis default, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. There's, there's desktop audio. I'm not sure. Uh, but there's a way to get my, to, to run everything through Logic. But right now I've got something up in Logic. Um, and I know you're like going, oh, that that would have sounded so much better if we could hear it. I, I get that. I, that's, yeah, I'm not a, going through a stereo mic or anything like that. Um, so if you could hear what I, that music directly um, through, you know, through the software, you know, stereo and everything would be awesome. Yeah, I, I get that. Uh, that's not what this channel is about as much as just me kind of sitting with you and teaching you guitar lessons. So, hey, Richard Lawson's in the house. Um Yeah, I, uh, I could, I mean, I have a lot of mics, but I, you know, again, I'm not, I've got two inputs. I've got my studio set up. As soon as we're done here, I'm in my studio working. Um, I could, this mic is a very good mic. I mean, it's a $2,000 microphone um, and better than any mic. I could do that, but then I'll be hitting it with the guitar. Um, and then if I moved it over here, it's not where I need it. I need it over here when I'm working. So it means rejigging every morning. Or every time I want to do a lesson, you know, it's just, to me, it's just not, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fighting technology. It's just that if I did this, like I said, if this were my full-time gig, if I were doing this for a living, uh, the YouTube thing, uh, no, no, you're, um, I, I get it. I get it. You're not wrong, Sham. It's just, uh, you know, my, uh, my priority is working Oh yeah, yeah, and that's another thing for headphones. <laughs> if I were in headphones, um, so I, I I can work on it um, and try to come up with see see what it would what it would entail. What could would get a better sound? Um, definitely could get a, a microphone if I could get a microphone that was like just a USB microphone. 
um, I could use that instead, um, and that might be a better sound. Um, and that way I could just hook it into one of my, well, I don't have any available USB ports. I have a hub, with like eight USB ports, and they're all full. So, um, But I, I could get a bigger hub and uh and then put in uh put it put a usb mic in there or something like that so if i if i used that mic for this it might sound better than what right now what i'm using is the microphone for um yes exactly the lot the lawn crew was flat today and that would be the reason to change the day of the lesson i don't know if anybody um I mean, I, there's no reason why it has to be Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. That's where it was. I could do Tuesdays. I could do Thursdays. Um, I just have to remember. <laughs> That's, today, I almost forgot. I, last night, I was like 11 o'clock. I went, oh, tomorrow's Wednesday. I got to do my live stream. Uh, put a, oh, yeah. Okay, I can do that. Hold on a second. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, see, you said blue, right? Uh, Blue's a good microphone company, too. Yeah, I've seen... Uh, no, that's not the one. Yeah, it's... Now, the, how does this thing mount on it? And, you know, it's like, I don't want to... I mean, oh, it's just like a C clamp kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, to have that, con my desktop is so full of garbage right now to have that on there. I mean, um, I don't know. Yeah, everybody's got the broadcasting going on. It's really, though, if I were to do this, uh, so the, pro the good thing about the, the blue mic is it's YouTube. I mean, it's USB. That's the, um, um, that's the advantage to that, right? That is a, U wait, is it USB? Yeah. Um, and that could definitely improve the sound quality. I, I don't, dis don't dispute that. Um, I'm not going to wear headphones. So that's not going to happen. I don't need to hear anything. Um, it's just me. If I were doing a Zoom thing, that would be different. Um, but if we do change the day, I mean, it might almost makes sense to get away from the, the just the gardener alone and the pool guy. And that way I can actually meet with him if I need to, <laughs> to walk away from the lesson. Nobody comes over on the rest of the week. It's only Wednesday. So why I chose Wednesday, I, I have no idea. Yeah, USB is not good for sound. Yeah, I mean, um, I I actually know some people that have recorded records with USB mics, so it's not horrible. Um, but if I'm using the if I'm using the XLR, then I've got to run it through something, and I'm running. I've got everything wired now. I just have two channels, so I'm not running, and so I only have a channel for electric guitar and a channel for acoustic guitar, and to to change that up would be just kind of a pain. That's why it hasn't happened. Um, I could use my acoustic mic, like I said, uh, but then it's going to be sitting here, and then, and this is not USB. Mondays or Fridays, still, okay, Lena, any, any day is good for you. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays don't generally tend to work. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking, Gary. Um... Like I said, if I were doing this, I don't even know if Rick Beato, uh, he probably has one mic. Although when he does his pop thing, you can hear everything in stereo. But that's recent. Originally, you couldn't do that. But uh, he's more recently kind of somebody wired it up for him, so it works really well. So chat, Wednesday works good for you. Starting this Friday. <laughs> yeah, you want me to do another lesson this week, don't you? You guys got used to seeing me seven days a week. Now I'm down to one day a week. It's like you guys have to go through withdrawals. So I'm wondering if you like during the week you're seeking out annoying people to talk to because you miss me. 
<laughs> have you taken on more annoying friends? <laughs> like, please go to lunch with me, person I really don't generally like very much. <laughs> Not Thursday. Okay, good to know. Monday, Thursday, or Friday. Okay. Um, Bruce, are you telling me that Wednesday is generally not good for you? <laughs> I, I could lean for Friday. It would be going into the weekend. But then if I go away for the weekend, then it's like I have to reschedule. Fr Wednesday is like the least likely to be a holiday. Although that's not bad. If I were on, like Monday wouldn't be bad because if it were Monday, um, then we would we would come up, up, up against a up, up, bump up against some holidays, and I tend to have more viewers on holidays because people are just sitting around. Most people don't go out of town, but, you know, some of you might be like, oh, Monday, I'm going to be, it's a long weekend, I'm going to be out of town. But you guys can watch me anywhere. <laughs> so it's not like, I can't take this with me anywhere. So maybe, maybe Monday's a work. I don't know. Let's stick with, let's stick with Wednesday next week, and then, and then we'll, um, we'll shoot for maybe Monday. Oh, you're in the office. Yeah. <laughs> I'm your escape from annoyance, Gary. <laughs> you have a real high threshold for annoyance. Oh uh, yeah. Mondays. Yeah. I see Mondays would be good, right? Monday. I could, I could cheer you all up. It's Monday. Yay, Tom. You can look forward to Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blue microphones, blueberry. Yeah, blueberry is a great mic. Um, let's see. Uh, blue. Oops. Yeah, that's a thousand. But I, I'm not going to spend a thousand. If I'm going to get a, if I'm going to. Upgrade a mic. I'm going to get a U87. Uh, sorry, U47 for my studio, which is about four thousand, five thousand dollars. So too much democracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I need, it needs to be a dictatorship. The trains will run on time. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not going to do Sunday. That's a, and Saturday. I'm, I'm going to probably stay. Keep it away from the weekend at this point. But. Uh, Oh, your day off is Thursday, Dennis. Does that that mean you're like out of the house doing stuff, putting pants on? I hope. Um, I know it's Europe, but you should put pants on, unless you're going to one of those many, many beaches you have in Europe, which we don't tend to have here in the states. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I probably should watch these videos later. I just never do. I did uh, film a new video. Did you see my, um, whatchamacallit? Uh, and I, you know, I I should probably rebrand that um, video as kind of like one of my favorite finger picking patterns or whatever. But because people are like, I don't know who Benny Humane is or whatever. Um, I did a whole lesson on that pattern, and it, it's to, to teach it. I went, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll just show this, and it's like, oh, wait, there's a lot going on. I didn't really realize I was doing that much, but this this whole thing. That's John Mayer, and it took me a while to get that. Uh, but basically, like, play a G chord. Oh, I'm sorry play a G chord and so you hit the bass note and then hit the bass string and knock it into the fretboard 
But when you do that, also hit the strings. You can practice just doing that. So it's crazy because you're actually getting a chord and a snare head at the same time. Normally when I would do that, it would be like, so. Right, I could only get a snare head. I couldn't do both a snare head with a pick and, uh, and a chord pitch. Uh, but with this, so. It, that, cool, that's a cool trick. And it's very similar to the, uh, See, I used to teach Blackbird back in the day as a kind of a, um, a uh, kind of a Travis pattern. Um, like that. But then I realized Paul was actually kind of striking the strings with his in, the nail of his index finger. He wasn't plucking them, which is not easy to do, but it was just how he played. And so it was easy for him. It sounded natural. Because I saw a video of him playing the song, and I was like, wait a minute, that's not how I play it. He's playing it wrong. <laughs> Paul, if I ever go to his house, <laughs> like my student does, I remember teaching Blackbeard to my student. Cruz Beckham and he goes, oh yeah, my my friend's grandpa wrote that song. <laughs> and I went, wait, what? I was like, oh right, your mom is friends with Stella McCartney. I forgot. So it's like, yeah, so yeah, we go over to his house. He'll sit at the piano and just start playing. And I'm like, that's just got to be surreal to be at Paul McCartney's house and then he's just playing. <laughs> Uh, Sam, September, please demonstrate the McCartney index. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so he's just kind of doing, I mean, you can practice it with, it's, uh, it's, it's, oh, let me get rid of the big, I mean, the music here. Let me go back here. Go there. Okay. So, you know, like I'm using my thumb in the second finger. Kind of hitting a couple strings. This is the hard one to do that. Um, I am a leprechaun. It's really not Travis patterns. I forget. I used to call it I am a leprechaun. So like, uh, so. Well, I guess it is kind of a Travis pattern. Again, I taught. Uh, Dustin the Wind wrong for a long time. I thought it was a four finger pattern. And that's I'm a leprechaun. I am a leprechaun. I am a leprechaun. And then I would do, sometimes you would hear, I think in, they would actually do, I live in Indiana, which is the one I taught in Indiana. I would say, I am a um, My nail's getting too long. And um, so uh, that's kind of what he's doing up here, Paul is. But he's actually. So, but but in, I'm sorry. The 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 um, dust and wind is actually I think the way they played is thumb bouncing around between the fifth string and the fourth string. So it's like. So that's Merle Travis. That's more of a Travis pattern. If you were to play it with four fingers, it's almost more classical. It's the exact same result, but this is much more classical Giuliani arpeggio style. And then more, you know, more uh, uneducated version with the Travis pattern. So it's kind of interesting there. Um, but basically what, what what I'm doing with the Travis pattern there is I'm on the middle four strings um, and I'm not going to play C, I'm just going to play open strings. Um, grab the thumb on the fifth string and the second finger on the second string and just pinch those. Okay, so you're pinching them together 
and that represents a quarter note. One, and then on beat two, you're gonna go thumb on the fourth string, and then second finger, or first finger on this third string. One, two, and, okay? Almost sounds like a bugle call. That's the first half. That's the first two beats. The next two beats, you take, gosh, I got something scratchy on my neck. Um, you take, you separate the thumb and the second finger. So instead of pinching them and playing them together, you play the thumb, then the second finger. That's the second half. So you go thumb, second finger, and then you do the same thing, the thumb first. So it's to get a pinch apart. So together, thumb first apart. So I live in Indiana. I live in Indiana. But that's kind of the pattern that Paul's probably trying to play, but not, is my guess. Um, he probably, he was just trying to figure out how to make it work, and he just came up with that. <laughs> so, and it's magic. It's magic. So I think it sounds more legit. I'll have to do more research on it. But again, like for, for years I taught, I taught it with those, um, uh, the four finger version of that, and I was wrong. They actually, they actually do more of a Travis thing. And same thing with Paul. I treat it more like a classical guitar piece, which is fine. Because that's actually easier than trying to get that little brush with the index finger. Um, yes. No, no, no. I think it's, Sam, I think it's up there too, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I have to listen to it again closely. Um, <laughs> such a classic, you know, guitar song. Great, great guitar hook written by a bass player, for crying out loud. One of the best. Um, but, yeah. Rick Beato should do the 20 best acoustic guitar-led songs. Um, all right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Gary. Personally, <laughs> your uh, your method of dress. <laughs> Gary says I'm way closer to Travis than classical. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, although I studied both, so um, yeah. So that that the the lesson I did, I really break it down on the pattern. And it's it's a fairly common groove. It's not like I'm the only one that does that groove that I came up with, but. Um, uh, on, on the Benny Main song. It's a nice tune. If you have Spotify, put it on your playlist. Add it to your playlist. It helps, it helps uh, Benny out. He's, he's, got a, he's got a great... And so the, out, the EP came out, and I have two songs on it that I co-wrote with him. Um, well, and the one, which is the uh, Sun In My Eyes one, that song was done, but they gave me a third of the royalties and publishing, uh, pr production on it and publishing, uh, because I added so much to it. They weren't, that song wasn't going to be on the album. And they sent it to me, and I did a bunch of stuff, and they were like, oh, my gosh, now it's going to be on the record. So I guess I kind of made it worth releasing. Ergo, they gave me writers. Uh, kind of often what they do with producers now anyway, because the record companies don't have as much money uh, for that kind of stuff as they once did. Um, although it's starting to grow, and I got paid. I got some, some money up front for that. Um, and then the other uh, song started with me and then I sent that to Miles and Miles and Benny wrote the top line to that, which is actually really nice. The, uh, where we are is a really nice melody and the lyrics aren't bad either. I thought, I thought they did a good job. So, um, but yeah, I think that part of the reason I get to work with so many young writers is because I do have, um, one foot in the past and one foot in the present and a third foot in the grave. Uh, and so I am able to kind of cull from that, the past, and do that. Uh, they sent me, a Benny and a, another producer sent me a track, another track that they took everything out of but the bass and the vocals 
and the beats. And I did the same thing where I added a bunch of stuff to it, bass, guitars, you know, all sorts of stuff. And um, uh, we'll see what happens with that one. If I think they really liked it. But it's funny because the vibe on that song was the beat on it was like a bossa nova. So it just kind of had this Brazilian vibe to it. So I did a Brazilian bossa nova intro for it. Um, so I took the, the music track that they sent me and instead of starting on bar one or bar one, or whatever, I moved everything over like four bars and did this intro on just the classical guitar and, um, and then sent it to them that way so they could hear it and, and see if they liked it. So I don't know if they're going to use it or not, but, um, and no, a third is fine. A third is fine. Uh, Bieber, Bieber is generous with me. Uh, but then, what, you know, some some stuff, it just gets so many people on it that everybody's got to get a piece of it. So it'll come out of mine. It'll come out of everybody's. Um, I mean, I've gotten as much as 50% on songs with Justin. Um, you know, and I generally, my thinking is that when it comes to songwriting, the bed is like a third, the melody is a third, and the lyrics are a third. Um, I, have, I, I work with one other person that thinks differently about that. Um, but... Uh, you know, that actually works to my advantage most of the time. Um, because he thinks of the bed as being 50% and then the lyrics and melodies being 50%. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, but what happens is he also believes that nobody can take anything out of his 50%. So, so when I work with this guy, other people are taking stuff out and it all comes out of my 50%. And so I'm like, wait a minute. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't do a lot of writing with that guy anymore. Um, at least not with big pop artists. I've done some smaller things where you don't have so many people involved. Um, but yeah, how many feet was that? Wait, what? No, <laughs> story time. I don't, I don't have a story. Well, I need, I need, I need somebody to tell me, let's see, get me prodded on a story. What time is it? Oh, it is. It's been an hour and a half. How many feet was what? I'm sorry. I did. I say something. Uh, oh, that was three feet. Yeah, <laughs> one foot in the past, one foot in the present, and one foot in the grave. Yeah, they call me tripod. <laughs> Hardly. Uh, all right. So let's see. Um, so next week, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a review. However, you will get those F sharps and you will get those that B flat. So I'll be able to write out an entire D minor scale for you. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a lot. It may, like I said, it might be a two pager. Um, I don't want you to get discouraged. So I don't want to move too fast. So I'm trying. I should. There's bits in this today's lesson that were kind of a little bit, you know. A little bit tough, but oops, that's not what I want. This is what I want. I'm going to delete this one. Remove, yes. Okay. Um, you know, bar 21 is a little bit challenging, but that's good. It's good. You can take it super slow. And if you have to, you can read the one that has your handwriting on it that you write the note names in, but I also want you to transition away from that. Um, you can also make note cards and stuff like that, so... Anyway, um, uh, uh, oh, no. Sorry. Church stuff. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, when are we doing the black notes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're doing the black notes now. Uh, and so that's, but it, it's, oh, we're not, we haven't done 16th or 8th notes yet. Um, and so that will be something, we'll, I think once we learn all the notes, then we'll probably do review of the strings or string pairs, and we'll start to introduce 8th notes. Um, 
again, the note value, the time value of a note is irrelevant. The tempo is relevant. So those half notes, those whole notes at the very top of this page, if the tempo were 300, would be the exact same speed as 21 at 75. 75 beats per minute is the notes are going to go by just as fast at 21. I don't even know if this metronome goes. Oh, sorry. What the heck? Hold on. Oh, oh, I hit that. <laughs> I got to get rid of that. All right. Um, but like 75, here's 75. Two, three, four. So at 21. Okay. So that's um, that's what's happening there. Um, but if I if you play the top measure, the top four measures at 300, I don't even know if I can get to 300. So let's see if it does. It's the fastest way. Oops. Oh, I can get to 300. That's cool. Okay, so here's 300. Da, da, da. One, two. Here's, so here's the top. that that top, um, um, the top four bars would be really slow, but at, at 300, the tempo is what determines the speed, not the note value. Um, now, if the song is all in one speed, then obviously half notes are going to be twice as fast as whole notes. But again, that's the exact same speed as far as those quarter notes are going to go by exactly as fast as the whole notes went at 300. Um, and 300, believe it or not, that's you think, oh, well, nobody plays 300. Actually, um, Donna Lee, I think, is at 300. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the tempo for freaking Donna Lee. I mean, are you kidding me? Um, and I thought it was 150, and so I transcribed it with a bunch of sixteenth notes, but it's really, all, those are all eighth notes. Well, tri triplet eighth notes and eighth notes. Um, where are we? There we are. So, yeah. Oh, my viewer, viewers go up when I hit, when I start jamming on Donnelly. So we got pretty good. I mean, we're still not COVID numbers here, but 36 is the total high, I think, here. Uh, we got 35 likes, which is awesome. I made 20 bucks. Hey, woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. We'll put it in the bank. I'll buy Bitcoin. No, I won't do that. What's Bitcoin doing today? I don't have any Bitcoin. Don't worry. Uh, we we haven't talked about that. I mean, a lot of people are like, I made so much money on Bitcoin. Yeah, I know, but what? So what is it? Well, I, I can't explain it. <laughs> yeah, no, you, I wouldn't buy invest in something that I can't explain. Especially, I mean, in fact, that whole uh, um, pipeline thing. Oh, it's back up though, three thousand, whatever. Um, that whole colonial, colonial pipeline thing is a perfect example of why, why you know, Bitcoin is like, eh, yeah, because somebody was some investor had thirty five million dollars wiped out, just completely empty out of his wallet, had no control over it, just went away, and. Uh, and that 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 would probably be worth 350 million today, but it just got stolen or something from, and um, and that's kind of what the Colonial Pipeline they paid a ransom in Bitcoin, and the FBI managed to get most of it back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, it, if I had 
30, you know, if I had $50 million in cash in my house, which would be stupid, but it'd be really hard for somebody to come and get it if they didn't know I had it. So anyway, quavers, semi-demi-quavers, semi there's a dot. Oh, rest. Yeah, the, the, the dot thing, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do the dot, the dots, Aslan. We'll, you'll, you'll understand that. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, it makes sense. Basically what happens is, um, like if you look at the top note there, what note is that? You see a D, right? Yeah. So now you now you see that as D. The same thing is with like syncopated rhythms with dots and sixteenth notes and eighth notes. They look confusing, but then you realize there's only so many of them. Uh, there's less of those than there. There's less variations on those than there are, um, you know, notes on the on the piano. So you you could feasibly memorize them all. You can start to see those rhythmic figures, the dotted quarter to the eighths and the sixteenths and the combination eights and the syncopated blah, blah, blah. You'll start to see all those things as, if I teach you right, you'll start to see them just at a glance without having to think about them. Um, you kind of going to have to keep it simple and drill some of those. We'll, when, we, when we go back and start to review everything, then we'll start to introduce um, 16th or eighth notes um, and we'll definitely start introducing dots. We haven't done that yet, have we? We haven't done like dotted half notes or anything. Um, so, yeah, Aslan, good point. <laughs> it's just like the money I have. Yeah, I mean, and I have I have friends that made a lot of money. I have a friend that bought an entire Bitcoin back in, you know, which is still not that much. You know, they go, oh, well, that's got a Bitcoin. That's, you know, it's going up. You know, he paid six hundred dollars for it, and it's worth thirty three thousand dollars, thirty five thousand dollars now. Yeah, that's great. Uh, but you didn't buy a hundred bitcoins, then you'd be talking some real money. Um, and people that are mining them, they're spending more on power, electricity than they're um, than they are spending on uh, um, <laughs> um, than they're spending. They're getting from the bitcoin if they even happen to get one. So. Um, but I, uh, uh, I think the thing that, that's coming out of Bitcoin that will be very usable is blockchain. And I do think that at some point, cryptocurrency will be something that like banks used to do overnight transactions. I think ultimately it would save banking industry billions a year, billions a year if they didn't have to, uh, do their transactions in, uh, some form of, uh, paper, you know, currency like the dollar. Or the Deutsche Mark, well, Deutsche Mark is not a thing anymore. <laughs> so the euro. Um, so gold or silver? Well, you know, it's funny because someone pointed this out to me the other day. Uh, um, a uh, um, 2,000 years ago, an ounce of gold would get you a really nice robe and some nice sandals. And um, today, it'll get you an okay suit and some okay shoes. You know, like $1,800. You can get a decent suit. You're not going to get a five thousand dollars suit or a twenty thousand dollars suit, and you know shoes. You know you could spend four or five, six hundred dollars on a good pair of shoes. Um, you know, so a, an ounce of gold is, is, and you know, I'll tell you the two things. If because if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, and then so many people think that, um, hopefully not enough to make it self fulfilling. Um, but if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, gold, silver aren't going to do you any good. Um, you're, you're going to basically, there's going to be two things that are going to be <laughs> the currency, uh, uh, ammo and bottled water. That's it. So if you want to stock up on current, if you want to have currency, just get <laughs> stock up on ammo and bottled water. Uh, I don't even know if gasoline's really because Most cars, need, if, if, uh, electronics aren't working, so who knows, but I'll stick with the stock market as long as every is because ultimately, if if everything goes to hell in a handbasket and it's ammo and and bottled water are the only currencies, gu guitars are a safe investment. Actually, um, in inflationary times, guitars are a good investment. That's probably why we've seen such a spike in prices for high end vintage instruments. It's happened in the past as well. And um, there's a story I can tell, but I think <laughs> Gary's gone, so he's going to miss the story. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think if, if the currency of the day is bottled water and ammo, I'm just meat anyway. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm just gonna be someone's slave or I'm gonna be meat because I got nothing to offer. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. Uh, <laughs> DWD, welcome. 
Um, yeah, join up if you're, you know, join us on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so what was my story? I said something and it made me think of a story. Now I can't remember what it was. Platinum. One. Oh, I, oh, guitars. Yeah. So back in the day, I, I, uh, when I was a kid, um, I was really into, and I still am into stock market, and uh, and I'm a buyer and a holder generally. Uh, I I will I will if I have huge gains on something, I will take my money out so that I'm sitting on profit um, and put it in something else. Uh, that way, and if the stock goes down, it doesn't really bother me. Um, but and that's only if I'm up like three or four or five hundred percent. But um, and that happens quite a bit on some stocks, like. I did it with Netflix. I did it with Starbucks, um, and put them into other things that have done very well. So, um, but I invest in basically what I'm investing in is people, and uh, I know that commodities. I've invested in commodities back when I was a kid, like in, when I was 18, 19, 20. I bought um, oil leases for uh, leases for oil fields, but then the price of oil dropped, and the leases became worthless. Um, and generally what happens with commodities, if the price goes up, the the um, hunt for more goes up and then the price goes down. Uh, but with a company, a corporation, a good stock, you, you basically invest in people that have mortgages to pay, car payments to pay. And they have they all have a vested interest in keeping the thing going, uh, whether it's Amazon, which I don't own outright, but I know many of my mutual funds own it. But when I was a kid, I was you know 18 years old. And I was hanging out a lot with my broker. It was a pretty big broker. It was the vice president of Merrill Lynch. And um, he, um, uh, um, I was learning a lot, and they were going to sponsor me for the test, was it Section 7 test or Series 7 test or something like that. Uh, they thought I would, you know, would be a really good broker, and um, <laughs> which is funny, I hadn't even gone to college yet. And, but I just knew a lot, and they were impressed that I, and this is before the internet, I mean, I just did a lot of research. And... Um, they, I, I said to them, I said, you know what would be really cool is if you could create, and I don't know how you would do it, but if you could create some kind of mutual fund that invested in vintage guitars. Um, so first and foremost, you'd have to have a really good vault and a person that would attend the instruments on a regular basis to make sure they were humidified, all that kind of stuff. They were safe, you know, but it would, you know, you... You've got something that could be completely destroyed by fire or water or something like that. So you want to make sure it's safe from all those elements and lack of humidity and too much humidity. Um, and um, the um, uh, but in other words, like there are a finite number of 59 Les Pauls. I think there's only three left-handed 59 Les Pauls, and Paul McCartney owns two of them. Um, and the um, it, if they had taken my suggestion and bought vintage, for one thing, just the fact that they were in the market buying them and, and, and hoard, essentially hoarding them and storing them would drive the value up even more. Uh, so they'd be worth even more today than they would be um, if there if there was some kind of fun and and I think you could do it for any kind of collectible. Um, you could make it do it for stamps, coins. Um, uh, you could you know you could do antique furniture. I don't know. There's all sorts of things that have value, appreciating values, um, and so um, so that's. And the cool thing is that you could be like, if you had a, the fund, you would be had like the vintage guitar fund, you know, like you own those guitars, kind of, <laughs> not really, you couldn't go play them, uh, but it would be really, really cool. It'd be a cool way to, uh, to in, in invest. But had they done that back in 1980, when I told them to do this, <laughs> 1980, uh, you could get a, you could get a 59 Les Paul for, I don't know couple thousand dollars now they're a million dollars you imagine that kind of uh and they'd be worth more than a million if you were taking them out of the market uh, but the that kind of appreciation on a mutual fund would be insane so yeah we've got a lot we got we got a lot of drought here that's true and yet i'm still watering my yard 
I got to I got to turn off my front part. It's it's the sprinklers are broken, so it's just blown. I didn't know I had. That's what the gardener wanted. I had a, a sprinkler head that was um, sending water to um, the street uh, in my in front of my neighbor's house. I'm like, I didn't know I had water going all the way over there. So, um, so yeah, we need just dis- we need to just make a bunch of desalination plants. That's that's what they do in Israel. Israel, 100 percent of their water comes from desalination plants. So uh, we, California needs to really embrace that. Uh, Santa Barbara had one and then they shut it down. They didn't finish it because uh, they, they didn't need it. And then now they need it. So they, they're finishing it. So Santa Barbara is going to have plenty of water soon um, once they finish that desalination plant. But I'm not sure where they are on that. But it would be nice to have them. <laughs> bring on the apocalypse yeah yeah well and if, if there's an apocalypse uh uh i'll probably smart people will go north uh because at least there's there's uh in Ca- i'm in la smart people will go north i would just start walking north um so i don't know it's i i don't know i wouldn't survive long though Yeah, Steve. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Yeah, we're we're pretty safe because we're pretty much in the city. I mean, for you know, I think to fire to get to my house, and we ju- we already had a fire uh, two years ago, so everything on our hills was already burned. So we're we're pretty burned out here. Um, but uh, they um, uh, uh, we'd have to burn through at least ten twenty thousand houses before it got to our house. So uh, I I think it would be make the news to say the least. I mean, they lost 300 houses in Pasadena in 92 and it made, uh, well, 300 houses in Pasadena, 300 in Malibu and 300 in Laguna beach. And it made the fed and national news. So, uh, that's a, not even a thousand houses, um, uh, which is a lot, especially if it's your house. Yay. The tigers won. Nice. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're we're past the rainy season and we didn't get any rain, so you were definitely uh, hurting. But there's definitely things they can do, and you've got a well, so you're fine, Holly. Uh, we almost bought a house with a well instead of this one. That was interesting. It was a whole different kind of thing. I thought about the Tesla solar panels. We, you talked about that before. With a with a, it's expensive. It's a hundred grand or something for the whole setup. My electric bill just isn't that high. It's like 200 bucks a month. I mean, it would take, I wouldn't live long enough to benefit from it. So, like I said, our house is so cool. It doesn't, the AC hardly kicks. I mean, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not even 200 a month. I mean, maybe averaged out with the summer months, maybe 200 a month. I mean, generally, it's me by myself with everything turned off except in my studio. So, Steve Barry, where are you? I forget. Fire season wise. Oh, I see. Yeah, see, pg and E. I know. It's just, it's ridiculous. And they turn it off because of fire. See, that's right. I forgot pg and E because of, because of the, a lot of the massive fire problems a couple of years ago, a few years ago was uh, from pg and E transformers or cables blowing down and things like that. It hadn't been upgraded. Some of it, um, oh, in the fridge. That's great. Well, that's smart, Holly. Super smart. Although know that if there's a fire... The smoke will block the sun and the solar panels won't work. I had friends that had a problem with that. <laughs> and the solar panels won't work in, in fires. So that's why you have the battery. And the battery hopefully can store a lot. Those are, I think those are used Tesla batteries too, right? They, they're fully chargeable um, or mostly the same power as a, or if not. But I heard that was one of the ways they were going to recycle Tesla batteries. Oh, you're in Seattle. Oh, it's dry up there too. That's right. Yeah, I forgot. It's been... I love Seattle. In fact, every time I've been to Seattle, it's rained. But um, uh, but yeah, you're heading into the dry season. And, 
and it was a dry year to begin with. So, um, the um, the thing was, is as dry as it's been, it's never been cooler. And it rained here yesterday, so um, or Monday. Um, I was walking and I got rained on. Um, okay, so the power walls are good. Yeah, that's that's probably the key. Yeah, you're you're right. It's smart to have something like that. I don't have any southern uh, roof line. None of my roof goes south. So, um, well, I have a little bit of southern exposure roof over over my head right here. So, I don't know. I guess I could put some solar panels there, but then there's trees on the other side that block it. So, part of the reason my house stays so cool. Yeah, the creek. Yeah, the creek's gonna dry up. Yeah. And then, and then, we, then we'll get like a, a super rainy season and it'll be like, oh no, we've got to move everything out of the basement. So yeah, well, yeah, I'm hoping, I, it, we're just not headed to rainy season right now. So we're not going to get, it's, it's almost, you know, it's a June. We're just not going to get, man, the market has just been flat lately. Doing nothing. <coughs> uh Excuse me. The um, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, uh, weather. Yeah, we're getting hundred degree weather next week, so it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's the hard is when it gets like the low is eighty. That's when it's tough. And then the AC is running all night. But if it gets down into the seventies or into the sixties at night, then having the house open up while we sleep is usually pretty good. So. Oh. Oh, are you? Oh. Yeah, you got <laughs> the volcano. That's right. You could, yeah, Saint Helena, Mount Saint Helena could could erupt again. I, is Rainier a volcano? A Rainier? Sorry, Mount Rainier is that a volcano? Yeah, yeah, but this year has been colder than ever. I mean, I've never experienced a, a first half of the California year that was so cool. I've been here for 40 years, and it's uh, usually, you know, in May, we'd have 100-degree weather for a couple weeks, or in February, we'd have a couple weeks of 90-degree weather. It never happened. Um, so, all right, well, I'm going to sign off. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not looking forward to those triple digits. Uh, but we do have a pool, so I might take advantage of that. And so that's next Wednesday. It'll be 104, it says here. So that'll be interesting, a total radical departure. In fact, if it's only going to get down to the 70s, it's, I'm going to have to go running. Like I'm going to have to get up extra early to go running. So... All right, I'm going to sign off. Everybody looks like they're... <laughs> You guys could, you could totally uh, keep talking over here. So take it to Discord. That's why the Discord's there. So if you you got that link at the top there, feel free to join that, um, and then uh, we can solve the world's. Oh, M Mount Rainier is a vo volcano. Okay. <laughs> yeah, geologically speaking, yeah, we're talking millions of years here, so you're probably fine. But God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining in, us and and joining me. And um, we'll uh, do a review of all our notes. Probably won't have. Uh, ties or anything like that, but then um, we're going to learn a new string in two weeks. So yeah, we'll do a review next week. And I'll, but I may throw in some chords. So we may end up with two two pages again next week. Um, but I have to work hard. I have to get ahead of the game here. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, Steve. <laughs> Find me preserved in ash with strats in both hands. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody, God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye.